to have Rubina Ahmed Hunt with me right now. Rubina and I go way back. Way back. Way back. She is a, a personal finance expert. She's a journalist. And I'm just, it's been so long. It has been what? so long. What are some things that I need to keep in mind, that new entrepreneurs like me need to keep in mind when it comes to managing finances when you you don't have like one set job, right? So you have to figure out a system that is very organized in, in a way that you know where you're making money, if you've been paid, if you've invoiced, because when we work in a regular job, we don't think about that, right? We just get paid every two weeks, and the most you're gonna do is say, uh, oh, I worked a bit of overtime, you forgot to pay me for that, or oh, why did you, try, you know, why did you forget that I worked on, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to really communicate much yeah. with the payroll department, but you are sort of payroll in a sense, right? So if you go and you, like as a blogger, you go and you write a blog post for a brand, uh, for a brand, so you do branded content as they call it, and they say, okay, they're gonna pay you X amount of dollars, you've gotta somehow put down uh, when you finished that assignment, uh, how much they're going to pay you, if you invoice them, and if they've paid their invoice. Because at one point, I'll go back and I'll go all, like for example, yesterday, I went all the way back to January, just on my Excel spreadsheet to make sure I saw that, you know, everywhere that I've worked, have they paid me in full, or right. did I forget to invoice them? Because I often forget to do that. Um, so I think that's my number one tip is find a system. So some people say, oh, you can do it on your phone, you can do it on Excel, whatever it is. Just find the system that works for you. Excel works really well for me. Mm -hmm. I've kind of devised my own little sheet, sheet little that works for me. Yeah. I, I, every year I sort of perfect it even more and more and more. And, um, and stick to it and be very, you know, whether it's half an hour every week, make sure you're updating it. I usually, as soon as I get a new uh, gig, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. I write it down right away. And for some reason, if that gig falls through, at least I'd rather delete it than forget that I did it and not get paid, right? Girl, I know. I'm like thinking right now, shoot, did I invoice? Yeah. I'm thinking the same thing right now because it's true. I don't have a full system. I do invoice and I, I'm able to track that and stuff with yeah. fresh books and so on. But but still, sometimes you need I your own and my own system. Yeah. system. Yeah, and the one where you might use, you know, a, a software that helps you keep. Because I always like have tried all these different softwares, yeah. but I feel like you need a system that you've built for yourself. Mm -hmm. And mine is my cell phone. So on my cell phone, I use that reminder app more than I use anything else. So whether it's remember to invoice, remember to meet Anika at three, remember, you know, whatever it is, I'm always writing things down. Um, and then on top of that, I've got my Excel spreadsheet where I'm like, okay, uh, all my reminders will say, you've got to invoice, and then I go into Excel and say, okay, now I've invoiced, I'll check it off as invoice, now I just wait for the money to come in. And once you get, once you get that money yeah. now, um, what do you do? Because, okay, I am lucky in the sense that I'm, I, I, I act, so right. I'm actress, so I do, I do belong to a union, and I do get benefits, and... RSPs and all that kind of stuff. Okay. But should I be doing something additional? Yes. So and to what extent? So you even though you will act, it's not your full time job, so right. you're not making you're not contributing to a full time pension, right? right? So it's not like at the end there's going to be this pension that will represent usually you know eighty percent of your salary. That, that doesn't seem to be, and that isn't the case for most entrepreneurs. So they might have one gig somewhere where it does give you a bit of benefits, but that's not their full time gig. So it's going to be it's going to make up a small portion of maybe when they retire the income that they'll get. But even to take it back to right now, uh, when we get paid, so say you invoice someone for three hundred dollars, you usually get three hundred dollars plus HST. So you owe that HST to the CRA, so you've got to make sure you make a note of all the HST that you're collecting. The other thing is you have to save your own income tax because either you're going to be paying quarterly installments, which will happen as soon as you make more than $30,000 in a year. Uh, but even if, you know, whatever your situation is, you should be putting about 20% of that paycheck away uh, to pay for the, for, um, for your income tax because the first year that I was working completely self-employed and freelance, I got hit with a $17,000 income no. tax bill. And even though I had some of it saved, I had not saved enough, so I immediately started saving more of each little bit. Because I still get big income tax bills, mm -hmm. but I have the money in the bank, so it's not really a big deal. I just yes. take that money and give it to the CRA. Exactly, because this one, I'm still kind of half. 
like this this year, 2016, I was still sort of half. Oh, that's right. So this is your out. first year as a self-employed so it'll person. It'll be right. Yeah, so 20, I would say 20 to 25 percent because you can sort of project how much you're going to make in the year. So if you're going to be, you know, making good amount of money, um, you should be saving a bigger so chunk. So my philosophy has been, and this is true for full time and even more so for self-employed people, that when you get paid, you've got to do three things with your money. So the first thing you do with your money is you pay yourself. The most important person is you pay yourself. So that means you put money in your RRSP. You put money away in your emergency fund if you haven't funded it to the point where it would represent three months of your costs. So say the, the bottom fell out and no money was coming in, for three months you could still pay your mortgage, eat, afford your car, everything else that's in your life, whatever it is that makes up your life, right? And then uh, the second part is you pay your bills, so you pay your mortgage and all the rest of the stuff that you have to pay. And then the third is you, pay, you spend it. That's the spending part. So those three small things can help you kind of uh, manage your money in a very simple way where you know you have to put, like for me, I put 10% into my RSP and 15% in my TFSA. And the reason I put so much money in my TFSA is because I like to have a nice big chunky yeah. emergency fund because I am self-employed. Yeah. And I would rather sacrifice a little bit now that stress out. One thing with bloggers is um, when it comes to finding, I always want people to be very open about uh, what they get paid. Because yeah. this is a very new industry, this influencer industry, yeah. so to speak, and blogging is sort of a new career. And a lot of people will say, "Okay, I want to get, I want to become a blogger." Go right. Yeah, but how much? Like, if a big bank calls you and says, "We want you to write three posts," will you charge them? Mm -hmm. Right. So have some network where you can call people and be like, "Hey, when you did that work for so and so, how much did you charge them, and what do you think I should charge?" So you should have, like. Entrepreneurs, yes. yeah, there have a little people, like certainly who I've been able to, to call on, and that's been so helpful because you have no point of reference. Of There's course, no yeah. Glass door, no for blogging, or or you know what I mean. This, right, it's true. And it's and you don't want to undercut yourself. You yeah. don't want to because I I did that so many times where I quoted something and they're like, yeah, sure. And then later I found out, wow, because that's about ten percent of what I they should have charged. I should have charged them. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure. You're getting your personal finance space. Um, there are a lot, like a lot of people use Mint.com to organize their budgets. You, you, you mentioned Fresh Books. There's also um, there's, there's many sort of apps that you can use to organize yourself. But I think you shouldn't be reliant on the technology. As an entrepreneur, as a business person, as a self-employed person, you should sort of understand it better than the app does. The app should just be kind of a, a tool to help you organize, yeah, to complement your system rather than it's, you know, it, it's not going to be like a payroll service because there's a human being in your payroll department that sort of makes everything work and checks and balances everything. Uh, so that, for self-employed people, I think that you have to be um, a self-starter in everything. Like you can't really let anything um, have anyone else take care of it. And that's, I think that is the one big drawback is that it can be really daunting when you first start out. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, and there's so many people I, I, I say, you know, I didn't just up and leave my job, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and this is what me leaving my job is what I needed to do in order for me to get to, to this point. But it doesn't everybody doesn't have to do that. Right. Um, and I did say for quite a quite a while before doing this and I don't actually have a mortgage. I don't have kids and everybody's situation is, is different. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's always good to assess and, and figure out where where you're coming from because I've done this before when I did it safe right and I didn't have all these things in place and right. there was so much more pressure mm -hmm. so much pressure because you were just reacting because you wanted to get paid mm -hmm. instead of you know thinking creatively or you know what I mean so I it's, it's the worst thing ever to yeah that and I think that, that that's a really good point is that um, when we become self-employed or entrepreneurs, there's something more creative uh, that we want to do usually, right? So a lot of people in this space um, where it's like, I want my brand to be, I want to control it and I want to put stuff out there that it really represents who I am and how I think and my values. And for that reason, like, you have to stop and pause sometimes. Like every Sunday, I got this advice a little while ago, every Sunday spend a half an hour thinking about your week, not as a to-do list, but big picture stuff. Okay, so where do I want to be on Friday that I'm not now? And it could be like, 
I really want to connect with Anika because I love this new show she's doing and I feel like this is just going to give me a good place for me to talk about personal finance but also get to connect with my friend and get, you know, it, it can be, it can be selfish and it can be um, opportunistic but it, it should be something about um, sort of growing your brand, yes. growing your uh, your girls, yeah, exactly. And and I think if you don't stop and do that, what happens is you'll get a few different contracts, and you just kind of get into like almost like a full time job, right? Like you're just doing those things over and over again, and then six months later you think you're like, wow, I've done nothing to grow my brand or nothing to grow, nothing to reach out to new people. And I think that Sunday half an hour is, you know, whether you have kids or not. Mm -hmm. um, like I have kids, so I have to wait till nine o'clock at night. Okay. How has it been for you this morning? For example, I was just. Just tired. Even though I had a weekend, I was just yeah. tired, and then I had some website issue. But you just have to keep. It's you. You're your business. You have to. Like, are there days where you're just kind of like, I just don't want to do it today. Yeah, I mean, like, all the time. Like, I'm always tired, and yeah. so, and that that comes with also having two kids under the age of five, right? Dealing with my family, and um, you also have to sometimes pause and say, Do I need help? So is that, you know, am I, if you're, say you're a young mom and you're trying to launch a business, does it make sense to have someone come and watch your kids for a day so that you can go and do your thing and not try to be like sort of watching the kids and doing your stuff? Like you have to, you know, or if you are feeling like I'm spending all my time uh, you're cleaning my house. Do you want to hire someone to come and clean your house? So that gives you. I so do you, actually. Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. So you you feel like okay, I spent this much money, but that gave me this much time. I know, and we, we tend to have this sort of ideal of these these super women and the go girl, and you can do everything. Yeah. And, and sometimes I feel like new entrepreneurs feel like that is something to be celebrated, which it is because a lot yeah. of what you're doing on your own, but. You can't always, and it's not about overworking yourself, you know what I mean? Is that balance? Well, recognizing when but, you need help is yeah. one of the best pieces of advice that you can get as a, as a self-employed so person. Awesome. Yeah, this has been really helpful. I um, so. Like I said, we work together in CP24. You're on, where do people get your info? And, and Well, on my website, yeah. alwayssaymoney.com, you can find me there. I'm often on CBC Radio. Yeah. Uh, I do a lot of stuff uh, uh, with CTV Your Morning, so I'm everywhere, you know, and I'm a freelancer, so like you, when I get the call, I hustle Let's and go, go. Yeah. yeah, make it happen.